What is up, everybody? Sean Sheehan here for Sherdog.com, and I'm joined today by the Bellator lightweight title. I, 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 challenger is the wrong word here because it's it's not it's not really a challenger. It's fighting for the vacant title against uh, Patricky Pitbull coming up here in uh, in Dublin in what uh, about a week's time. Uh, Peter Queeley joins me today. Waterford's own Peter Queeley, although they call him Dublin's own Peter Queeley all over uh, all over Bellator. Peter, how are you today? Good, how are you, Sean? I'm not too bad. No. What have you thought of that? Like, I complain about it all the time, but I'm a complainer anyway, I suppose, on Twitter. But they keep calling you Dublin's Peter Queeley. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't mind. I fight out of Dublin. My kind of fighting career was made in Dublin, I guess. So, I don't mind, to be honest. I'm both. I'm from Waterford. I, I, I live and fight out of Dublin, so it's doesn't matter to me to be honest which one they call me yeah well I, I wanted to ask you kind of about that about and about kind of growing up in Waterford like I, I know when I think of Waterford I think of it as a kind of a, a great sporting county and a great sporting city like they have some great schools and hurling and, and football and stuff like that I remember I, I was at school I played a game above in Waterford and they had a cricket pitch and a rugby pitch and all, all together when you were growing up what did you play a lot of sports or what, what was it like for you growing up in, in normal life I suppose and in uh, in your sporting life yeah, I, I played every sport, like literally every sport. I was, I was at. A, it's funny you said that. At the school I went to, was a very big sporting school. They had like an athletics field and a, a soccer pitch and multiple GA pitches and rugby pitches and every kind of thing. It was just a big sports school. Saint Augustine's College, it was called. Um, so there's two schools in Dungarvan. There's like a CBS and there's that. So um, that's the one I went to, and it was like a very big sporting school. So I played everything. I played hurling, football, soccer, rugby. I, I, when I was in school, I sprinted, I, I did running, I did like javelin, discus, I, I did everything, like literally everything, every handball, every sport you can name, I did it. Do you, do you think that helped you? Because like, uh, we always hear from guys, say like someone like GSP who talks about, uh, you know, he, he was doing gymnastics when he was young and he felt like it helped his MMA career. Do you feel, feel like doing all those different sports helped you to do a sport now where you have to do loads of different sports basically in the one? Yeah, because it, it definitely helped me because I think like um, uh, it, it gives you a really good athletic base. Do you know what I mean? And that's, that's what I'm kind of known as in, in the gym as one of the better athletes in the gym. And, and that, I think that's what it's from. Um, and also, I think a lot of guys that get into fighting, they find fighting because they didn't do any other sports. And that's their first kind of sporting venture. And maybe they find it a bit later in their early teens or something. So they've, they've missed 10 years of athletic development I think a lot of, a lot of guys like this which I didn't miss I was playing sports when I was four years old um right through to now so I think that definitely helped me um just like constantly sports 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 and also because of my gas tank you train very hard in these sports and I think that develops it takes a long long time to develop you can't just kind of oh I'm gonna do loads of cardio for a few months and get fit that's not how it works it's it's a long process same as any skill was there any of the sports that kind of that stood out for you where you where you were like maybe good at hurling and almost getting on county teams or anything like that or was there anyone where, where you just kind of a jack of all trades and never like win for one until you found MMA uh, no I, I kind of the the ones that kind of dominated were hurling and football um, eventually but I, I, I tried everything and I, I was kind of pretty good at both of them kind of like c kind of county underage level kind of never played senior and um, and played for a very good club team and, you know, and whatever, just normal kind of a GA career, I guess, for a guy. I, I suppose, uh, moving out from GA, I could talk all day about GA, no, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah. <laughs> what was it like there last week, or, or a couple of weeks ago now, I suppose, at this stage, when it was announced that your fight against Patricky would be made, uh, obviously for the, the lightweight title, and Sinead Kavanagh's fight as well, I spoke to Sinead last week, will be made for the, the featherweight title. If, like it feels like in Irish MMA, we've waited for a long time with all the Irish fighters in Bellator to, to get one. I know we had we had Pedro, but what did it feel like for you and for Sinead about it kind of the same time to, to get it? Uh, I was just, I was jumping around my living room. I, I, knew, on, I knew on the Friday, um, John told me and I was literally jumping around my living room and then he rang me and I was like, just whatever. He, he, I need a bad connection. I couldn't even talk to him. We, we ended up texting about it then and I was just, I just couldn't believe it. Now there was talk of it. I'd been, to, I'd been getting told for a month or two before that, that this might be a title fight and to, and to be ready for that. But I didn't believe it. I was like, ah, they're just bullshitting me. Just whatever, just kind of, I don't know, just whatever. I just thought, I just didn't believe it. I never believed that. And I'm so skeptical. I just never believe anything. I'm like you, I'm just miserable. I just like, just don't believe that. I'm just giving out of it. Ever. But, uh, but they weren't lying. 
they were thinking about this and, and I was like, I said to John today, is it an interim title or the real one? So I thought they told me it might be an interim title as well. And he was like, no, it's the real thing. He's given it up. Um, I just couldn't, well, I could believe it, but it was amazing. I was just so happy. It's been such a long road. If you had told me 10 years ago when I started this or more that I'd be fighting for a, a, like a big world title, you know, I wouldn't have believed you. I'd be like, no, this, that's not going to be possible. It's just it's too much of a mountain to climb and here I am. So I'm just very proud of myself and very happy. That, that's funny because that was one of the questions I was going to ask you because like talking to a lot of lads, even like, uh, you know, James is always saying, I'm going to be the world champion and I've heard Brian Moore say, it's something I really, maybe you have said it in the past, but it's something I haven't heard out of you like all the time. And it's funny for, you know, don't, don't suspect MMA fighters, but MMA fighters say that they all want to be the best and all hope to be the, to be the best. But you said it there like you you didn't. How, how is that like you have a very different mindset than, than, than most other people? How, do you think that's helped you or has that been your mindset for, for a long while? Yeah, I, I'm, I think I'm just a bit more realistic. I, I, I believed I could, but this is so fucking hard to do this. And I know this and I've, I, I, I think I know this better than most because of the path I've took. Some guys have taken a more insulated path where they've, you know, the fights have been a little easier and they, they really do believe I'm the best and I can do this and blah, blah, blah. But when you've taken the path I took, you know you're, you're good, but maybe you're the best or maybe you're not the best. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's honestly what it is because I've been everywhere and I know the standard that's out there and it's very hard to string wins together at this standard. It's, it's you know, it's, a lot of it's on the night. That's what I found over, over my career is I knew I'm one of the best guys and I, I, I have that skill level, but you need to perform on the night. And if you are slightly off on the night and he has a good night, you're not going to win. Um, that's the reality of it. It's, it's, it's really knife edge. It's a really cruel sport because you only get a couple of chances a year to, to show this. Um, but yeah, I always believed I could, but you know, you'd be very naive and very, you know, to say, I'm going to be, this is not realistic. It's, it's, there's a lot of moving parts and it's very hard to do this. Yeah, I, I was looking through your record today and I know we, we spoke about it before, it seemed oh, Jesus, about three years ago now, I suppose, since, since we, we met in person, but about that that hard road, you know, I was looking through it, fighting over in Africa, fighting in the fight nights, even in Ireland here, fighting the likes of Joe McColgan, who's the champion mm -hmm. now in Cage Wars, it's just tough fight after tough fight, and now, you know, I'm sure you, you hear me give it out, but I'm an advocate for maybe not having as many tough fights, but you you prove, prove me a fucking idiot, like, so, so fair play, <laughs> yeah. but like that road, I think a lot of people would wilt and a lot of people it wouldn't it wouldn't work for them. But for you, was that the road you had to go to kind of prove it to yourself more than anyone else? Um yeah, kind of. And and, and you know, in the very early days I actually I kind of struggled to get fights. I remember people used to be turning me down when I was like two and oh and three and oh and stuff. I was just I think I was a bit of a booby prize back then at that Joe, for, for someone with a couple of fights to fight me, it was like, Jesus Christ, you, Joe, I'm not going to fight him or whatever. And I was, I was hard to get fights. So that's what dr drove me into going to these hard fights then. And then, you know, just, you know me, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not afraid of anyone. I just, you know, and I think, I th I'm hoping I'm going to be, this is going to be like a kind of a vindication that my way is the right way to do it. Because you see a lot of guys take the easier path, but then when the wolf is at the door and they have to fight it, they're not ready when they get to the top. Do you know what I mean? Um, whereas I feel like all these previous experiences for me is why I beat Patricky in the first fight because um, I had all these hard fights and I've, I've, I've experienced this before he is not my toughest opponent probably do you know what I mean or maybe he is it's very close do you know what I mean it's, but I've experienced that level many times before in Russia so um, this didn't phase me um, whereas you get some guys when they, when they take the easier path that's smarter in a way but then when they get to this Patricky type person they're not ready because he has had the hard fights, he's had the experience, and you will then. It's it's a very different level once you're, once you've experienced this kind of fighter. It's, you know, it's hard to explain, but it's um, yeah. yeah. Did, do you feel like I was looking through the record? I felt like the scope fight for you was kind of a bit of a turning point. Not some well that fight obviously, but an unbelievable fight like up there with Carl Pendrin's fight with with Mike King is the best fight I've seen live. Like just unbelievable. But like the fact that he almost beat Patricky. You know, a lot of people thought that he did in, in the fight previous to that. And then you went in there, obviously had a very tough start to the fight and then came back and, and beat him in an unbelievable way. <clears throat> Do you feel like that was a little bit of a turning point to say, all right, not only can I hang with these guys, I can beat the guys who are challenging with the guys right at the top of this division? Yeah, definitely. Because like, uh, I, I thought Ryan did beat Patricky probably just Barely, like uh, now, it wouldn't you couldn't be mad that Patricky got the decision either. It was one of them. It was just a real close one. Um, 
but it was a big turning point for me. And, you know, I, I, with that fight as well, I had a different mentality for that fight. All I focused on in that fight was just make it an exciting fight. Just go in and fight him and don't try and win and don't try and win rounds. Don't think about anything, but just damage and having a fight and let my toughness kind of shine through. Because I think when I can make it that kind of a fight, no one can beat me. And I've made that mistake in the past where I've been too tactical and lost fights, trying to do some sort of a strategy or, or whatever. But I think my biggest strength is just that I'm a tough cunt, basically. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and if I can draw people into this kind of a fight, I honestly don't think, see anyone beating me. And that's what I did with, with Patricky in the last fight. I just drew him into this kind of a real give it, take it kind of a fight. And you could see him start to wilt at the end of the second round. He was starting to break a little bit. Um, so that's my plan again for this one. Um, and I think that was a big one with the scope one for me that I kind of figured that out in that fight. That if I can just do that against this very highly skilled guy like Scope, maybe more skilled than me, um, very high skills. But I just I just drew him into that kind of a fight and, you know, we saw what happened. It was funny, I was, I was actually listening to an interview with Anthony Joshua last night and he was talking about kind of doing the same thing. You know, maybe he got a bit too technical and he got into maybe too much of it and he got for the next fight and coming out to kill. I'm going to throw the referee around and everything. So that kind of, you know, it, it, it does make sense. I, I want to just ask you, I want to ask you about the, the last fight and the next fight for, in a second, but uh, to move to Patricio for a second, he he relinquished the belt. And to me, I was talking about on the podcast and stuff, I, th- I think it's a very odd move. Like, uh, you know, he'll obviously be expecting his brother to, to win against you. And he won't, He obviously won't fight his brother. And then he's just lost for the 145 pound title. Do you, like, it makes very little sense. What, what, what did you make of it? Is he just doing kind of a favour to his brother to give him a chance to fight for the title? Or what, what, what way did you think of it? Um, he, my, he said something really cool, actually, in, the, in his interview on Earl Helwani's show, which I thought was really cool. He said that how, how can he be the lightweight champion if he's not the featherweight champion, that's what he actually said. He said he doesn't believe he kind of deserves to be the lightweight champion if he's lost his featherweight belt, which I thought was really cool. So maybe he means that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised by him. In the little bit of interaction I've had with him, he seems like a really, you know, tough guy, a real straightforward guy. And I, I think he probably does believe that. But what I was told is that he wants to challenge for the 145 belt again. He firmly believes he can beat AJ. And he wants to fight for that one. And I'd say what he maybe what he was told then was, look, you can't hold on to this then. If you're going to do that again, you can't. I don't know. I'm not sure. But that's what I was told, that that's what he wants to do. That's all he's focused on. So maybe he was kind of told then, okay, well, you have to give it up then. You've had it for two and a half years. You can't extend it by another six months or a year now holding on to it if you're going to go after the featherweight belt again. Um, but that's what I was told. And, you know, I'd say that's it. He just, he just firmly believes he can beat AJ and he probably wants to have another crack at that one again. Yeah. And that, that does make sense. I suppose before we get to the first fight, after the first fight, there was a little bit of, you know, the two brothers are kind of roaring and shouting at you afterwards. But you see, it seems like you you still have respect for, for Patricio anyway, but both of them. Was, was, was there any kind of respect lost after that immediately? No, because uh, what happened was he, he was, it wasn't Patricio was shouting at me. He was just whatever. It was Patricio was shouting at me. He was like, he was saying it was an illegal shot that I, that I caught him with. And, um, I said to him, I was like, no, it wasn't fucking illegal. I said, you, we can, we can, and I said to him, he was like shouting and roaring. And I said to him, look, I said, when we go backstage, we'll watch the replay together. And then that kind of quietened him. He was like, okay. And he kind of fist pumped me, whatever. And that was it. But then in fairness to him, he, he came up to me backstage and actually, actually like uh, said to me, okay, I watched it and it was, it was a legal shot. So I was like, fine, thank you, whatever. Um, I understand that emotions are high, whatever it's, you know, your, your brother just lost. You probably He probably did believe it was illegal or whatever at the time. He's just, whatever. I don't have any, wouldn't lose any respect from over that. Yeah. Um, it's no problem. Fair enough. I, I actually went back and watched the fight. We do a, I, I do a show called The Rewatch where I just watch the whole fight and kind of commentate over it. And honestly, you did way better than I remember. To be honest. Like I thought, honest, having watched the fight live, I was like, obviously a bit of, you know, an Irish lad. I have a bit, a bit, of, a, a bit of a bias there watching it. Yeah. But watching it back, like I thought the performance was by far and away the greatest performance your career having watched like most of your fights for the last few years have you watched it back and what, what did you think your performance in it and the fight itself I suppose yeah I thought I fought very well I thought it was my best performance against one of the best op- opponents I've ever had and I was I was a bit annoyed about the you know immediately after you hear the commentary and things and you hear the, what they're saying in the on the on the desk after the fight and it was really kind of 
you know what I mean? They're talking as if Patricky was kicking my ass or something during Sorry. the fight and I just got lucky or something. But then when you watch the fight, like Jesus Christ, like one judge had me 2 0 up. Now, I wouldn't argue if you gave Patricky the first round that maybe he did get the first round, but it was very close. But then I won the second round handy, like handy won it. And then the momentum was big time with me going into the third. Like if it had gone to the third, there's not a chance. No, I, I do think it, it was stopped early. I think he should have been left go to the third. Um, but he was not winning that fight. You imagine the mess in that, in that third round and the, the blood and the, 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 the... Do you know what I mean? It would have been a mess. There's no way he would have won. And I was a bit disappointed at the time. And I was only thinking, was the fight close? But then I watched it myself. And, you know, I, I was very happy with how it fought. I thought it was probably one all going in. I thought he maybe did win the first round, barely. Um, but, you know, it was two all going in to the third with a huge momentum shift for me. Um, which is which is how I saw, saw the fight going, um, and I was really happy with my performance. Yeah, so, like some fights like that when look, you know the fight ends with basically you on the bottom elbow on him, and there was a, another. I think there was only two takedowns throughout the fight. But like sometimes you remember a fight, it's like oh he took him down, but you didn't spend that much time on your back whatsoever. I know he landed a good, a nice few leg kicks at the, at the start of the fight as well. But other than that, I thought tactically like it was your fight. Like for for him. I, I, looking forward for me, he'd probably be trying to get more takedowns. He'd probably be trying to kick the leg a little bit more. But I felt like you did a great job of kind of winning that center of the cage and pushing him back. Is that what you're going to be doing again in a second? Not to give away the, the game plan or anything, mm. but like, is are those the main points? Stop the takedown, stop the leg kicks, and push him back. Yeah. Before I answer that, it's just people need to wake up. You do a lot of talking about this with the takedowns and all this kind of stuff and scoring and stuff. People still think. A takedown is the be all yeah. of a round. It's, they're, they're fucking retarded the way they go on. Even the, I was listening to the what fight it was, um, was Bisbing in some fight at the weekend. And again, he was on about takedowns again. I was like, what are you talking about? It's nothing to do with takedowns unless they're doing damage or whatever. It's about damage. And, and so many people now, just with a takedown, they, they think a takedown just, if it's any bit, you know, if, no matter what has happened, if the guy gets a takedown, he wins the round now. Um, so people still don't get this, I don't think. Um, but yeah, I'm not giving away at him by, by saying that. That is the game plan. You know what I mean? He knows what I'm going to do. I'm going to be in his face, you know, punching the fucking head off him, not giving him a chance to, 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 to work his counters and making him tired. This is the big thing with him as well. You know, you need, to, you need to not be afraid of him and get in front of him and make him fight because he only has about two rounds in him where he's this elite guy and then he, then he fades a bit. Um, he's still very good in the third and third round, and we'll see about fourth and fifth if it gets there. But he's not the same after the first seven or eight minutes if you can keep the pressure on him. Um, so this this is this is a big thing for me to keep in his face, keep the pressure on him, make him work. Um, you know, I hope he goes for takedowns. He didn't work out well for him the last time, you know, at all. And he gets tired going for takedowns when that's not your fight style, and you're getting forced to do this. It makes you very tired. It's happened to me in the past as well in some fights where. You know, I'm getting made go for takedowns all of a sudden. And this this can wear you out very quickly. Um, so, yeah, that is the game plan. I do need to watch that leg kick a bit more this time as well. He did well with that in the first fight. But being honest, it wasn't bothering me at all in that fight. Um, it was very sore afterwards, to be honest. But during the fight, it wasn't bothering me at all. Um, and that's why I didn't really pay much attention to it in that fight. Because over a three-round fight, you're not you're not stopping me with leg kicks or doing anything to me with leg kicks to make me change how I'm fighting. There's not a chance. Um, but over five rounds, I do need to be a bit more careful. That could have become a problem, maybe in the third and fourth round, um, if, if 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 it happens again this time. So I'll be I'll be watching for that as well, just to kind of deal with that a bit better and knock the taste out of his mouth early with that one. Hmm. How, how does it change the fact that it is a five-round fight in terms of, I know you explained it very well there in terms of maybe the tactics and the leg kicks, but cardio-wise, like, we speak an awful lot, obviously, every week on the podcast, Talking Shite, about fighters when they move from the three-round fights to the five-round fights and having to adjust their game to be a little less output-heavy. Like, if your game plan is to push him forward with lots of output, that it's going to be tough. Like, is it just, right, I'm going to go five rounds, I have that in the gas tank, tank or do you have to, like fight a little bit differently for the five rounds no the, the pace I fought at in the last one I can do that for five rounds handy easily um, as a matter of fact I, I, I'd probably try and fight at a slightly higher pace than the last one I, I started a little slow in the last one I was a tiny bit afraid of his power in the last fight because I, I was just you see all these highlights you're like my god he's just crushing people and I, I thought that he had this 
oh my god power where you where you get hit by him and you can't take it so I was a bit wary but then he did hit me a few times I was like no it's nothing I haven't felt before he's powerful but it's whatever I can take it so then I started picking up the pace when I my, my confidence went up so my confidence is already up now I know what he brings I'll probably start a bit faster now um and this is important to, to make him fight this way and 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 get him tired um you know the other the other thing as well is I feel like he might he might start a bit slower for what you just said because it's five rounds now. But if he starts slower, this works in my favor as well because the slower the pace of the fight, it kind of suits me too. Because the the thing he's good at is is how powerful and dynamic he is in the first ten minutes. So if he doesn't use that, he's kind of getting rid of his biggest strength as it is. So whatever way the fight goes, if it's a fast, furious pace, that suits me. If he if he chooses to fight a bit slower. That'll, that'll make it easier for me to crowd him and pressure him and, and, and drag him into deep water as well. So I don't really, I'm not really concerned about that. My gas tank has never been an issue and won't be an issue here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I appreciate it. Uh, last couple of things here, I really appreciate the time. Um, what's, what's it like to be headlining? I know James is supposed to be headlining and obviously that's, uh, you know, it's, I'm sure you're, it's a bit sad for James, but for yourself and he will headline many times in the future again and has in the past as well. To get to that spot, you know, we, we've been talking for the last few years, I suppose, now about James maybe going to America and the next Irish guy coming through to be in that headlining spot. What, what does it mean to you to be the one in the headlining spot? Ah, it's, it's like, it's, you know, all the previous shows, I was happy being come in event or whatever because James is my good friend and, you know, I'm delighted for him and everything. But I always felt like I could be main event maybe too. I'm popular too, you know what I mean? And, and you want that opportunity and that's what I've got it now. Um, so it's nice for me to get it. And James is delighted for me. He's absolutely made up for me that, that he thinks I've deserved this as well to be, he's not one bit, you know, people are kind of, I remember when it was announced, there was people on Twitter, oh, James is salty now and all this. Like, no, he's not. He's like, he's the nicest kid ever. He's just delighted for me. Um, he's got his job on hand as well. He's just focusing on that and he's absolutely delighted when I get in the showing I've, I've probably deserved for a few years as well. Um, so it's, it's a big deal for me. But, you know, I'm just delighted. I'm just absolutely delighted. I, I can't, it's going to be weird, actually, to be honest, because I'm so used to being, it's like the one-two punch, me and James. I, I go out first and then him. Now it's, now it's vice versa. So it's, it's going to be a bit different in the dressing room, but I'm just, I'm really happy about it. And uh, lastly, I always have to ask you about the walkout. As, as a proud Limerick man myself, to, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I assume it'll be the, the cranberries again coming out. And, like, ta looking at, at Patrice, or at Patricky's fights, like, for him to be in this spot for the title, in in someone else's backyard with the crowd like and that song g's up the crowd everyone knows like is it going to be extra special this time do you think walking out of course you know what i mean it's it's always special but now it's for the belt it's it's the main event now as well it's like and it's a big opponent as well it's patricky to his credit as well is a big name and people will be excited to see him in there with me as well um so it's it's uh, it's just very special. And like you said as well, everything about this fight favours me as opposed to the first fight. You know, it's at home. Disadvantage me. My crowd is there. Advantage me. Five rounds. I don't think anyone would disagree. That's advantage me. Um, so there's a lot of things there that are, are favouring me in this fight now. So my confidence is very high. Um, I just know I need to perform again like I did in the first one. I, I cannot see him beating me. Peter, I I can't wait for I can't wait just to get the house to be honest, but I can't wait to watch that the, watch that fight. It's gonna be uh it's gonna be a home dinger and a, and a great card as well. I appreciate the time. Thanks very much. No problem, Sean.